In this video, I'm going to show you the exact strategy that we used in order to get our family from zero savings up to, well, having a nice little savings cushion in about 18 months. The things we did can be broken down into three main steps. And I'm going to show you the exact steps we used, the exact Excel sheets that I used and any apps that I used in the process as well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Helen. I live in County Kerry in Ireland with my husband and two young daughters. I started working as a freelance website designer in order to make a little bit of extra income from home while my kids were small. I'm super interested in personal finance and business. And I hope to share some of that with you. I'm by no means a financial expert. However, I hope that me sharing my experience with you will help you in some way. So about 18 months ago, my husband changed jobs and we decided that this was the best course of action because he was spending a lot of time away from home. We never knew when he was going to be home or how long he was going to be home for. And it meant that we got very little time to spend as a family, especially while our daughters were so young. So we were excited by this new chapter in our lives. But the thing was, because of Christmas and the way the new job worked, we had to go for four, maybe even five weeks with zero income. And then we had to depend on our savings in order to get us through that time. So to cut a long story short, we basically used up every ounce of savings that we had during that period. We had started trying to save a little bit previously, but as you can see, we really didn't have enough of a cushion. And this is when I decided I needed to do something a little bit more serious to put a proper saving strategy in place. So as part of myself working as a freelance website designer, I was used to keeping my own accounts and my own bookkeeping. So I would always keep a record of anything I earned and anything I spent in relation to the business. So I was used to doing that. So I thought, well, I'm going to start doing this for our family's finances as well. And I kept it super simple. I literally have an, had an Excel sheet where I recorded anything that was earned as a family and anything that was spent as a family. And the way I did this, I literally went through our bank statements and I recorded, I wrote everything down, how much was earned in that month and how much was spent in that month. Those are the only two categories I had at this stage. And after a few months of doing this, I realized that we were spending pretty much as much as was earned in the month, every month. So this is why we were struggling to save anything at all. So I decided I needed to go a little bit deeper. I needed to record what was spent, but also categorize it a little bit further. So yes, I got another Excel sheet and I categorized our spending into these different categories. So the first category was our household. So that was things like our mortgage and our household bills. The next category was entertainment. So that came things like Netflix, Disney, YouTube subscriptions, things that weren't essential, but we still paid for. I had a category for groceries. That's fairly easy to explain. <laughs> Then I had a category for what my husband spent on the road. As a truck driver, he spent most of his day and week on the road and there was expenses associated with that. So that was another category that I kept. And then it was a category for what I spent and that was part of the household expenses, things like fuel, anything for the kids, new clothes, etc. And then there was also a category for recreation. So things that weren't essential, but were nice. So days out and meals out and little extras like that. Now, my knowledge of Excel is basic at best. But I still managed to collect all of our income and then all of our expenses and work out what was left after the end of the month. And now I could see where exactly our money was being spent, in what category. And this way I was able to decide whether it was worth spending that money on those things or not. And I only needed to do this for two or three months in order to get a good picture of our expenses. I find this was a great way to highlight things that either we weren't using, but we're still paying for, or we're paying for, but perhaps it was worth giving, let's say our mobile phone suppliers a call and just asking them, were we on the best plan for what we needed? Or give us the opportunity to perhaps change electricity supplier to see if we could save money that way. It basically made us a little bit more aware of exactly where our money was going. And I realized as part of this analysis that the money that my husband was spending during the week was what I felt was a little bit excessive. And because I'd done the analysis and I knew exactly what was being earned and what was being spent by him, I was able to take those numbers to him and have that conversation about money, which is never easy. I don't feel that's an easy conversation to have, but it was one that needed to happen in order to have a secure financial future. Myself and my husband have quite an open relationship with money. We have joint bank accounts and we don't have secrets about who's spending what. And because I took the exact numbers to him, he was able to say, okay, yes, maybe that is a little bit excessive. So what we did, once income was brought into our accounts, 
we allocated a certain amount for him and for myself for spending. And any spending had to be done through that account. And I think we set up Revolut accounts in order to be able to do this. And this practice just helped us both become more aware of what we were spending our money on day to day and if it was really worth spending that money. So what came of that then? My husband decided to take more meals from home on the road with him in the truck. He bought himself a coffee machine so that he could make coffees in the truck again instead of having to waste money on takeaway coffees on the road. So this led to a great reduction in spending for him. And to be fair, it was probably good for his health too. So we now had a better grasp on what we were spending our money on. The next thing we wanted to look at was how we could possibly earn some more. The area that we live in, we're really lucky because it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Because of this, there are hundreds, if not thousands of tourists that flock here every summer. And I wanted to take advantage of that. So what we did is we went away and we bought a mobile home and we put it on a piece of land that was close to our house. We spent a couple of months renovating it to quite a high standard. And within a couple of months, we were ready to rent that out on Airbnb. Now I know this isn't gonna be a viable option for everybody, but I have friends that even just have a spare room and they rent it out on Airbnb for the summer months to make a little bit of extra income. But now we had better control of what we were spending and we had an extra source of income. So we needed to make the saving process as easy and automated as possible so that we didn't have to think about it. So what we did was we made sure we set up a standing order that made sure every week money went from our current account where the wages went into into a savings account and we managed to increase the amount that we were transferring and because it was set up and automated we didn't have to think about it every week it was just happening on its own initially we were using a normal savings account with the bank that we were with but then i found a different app that actually offered i think it was 3.25 percent interest on your savings which was way more than any of the normal banks were offering the app was called lightyear and we still use it to this day and we can access this money anytime we want all i need to do is transfer the money back into our current account if we need it this means that we're earning money for nothing and obviously the more you manage to save the more money you earn is one of those cases where it sounds a little bit too good to be true, but I haven't found a reason not to do it yet. So these tactics all together have helped us develop a savings cushion of nearly 6,000 euros in just a couple of months. And we're on target to pretty much double that within the next six months. And I wanna just mention one or two things that I think have helped us in this process. And these are motivation and communication. So at the start of the year, Myself and my husband decided we wanted to start a transport business. And obviously in order to start any business, you need a little bit of capital and reserve. And we obviously didn't have that. We needed to be able to save so that we could buy trucks and equipment and diesel to get the business started. So this was great motivation for us both in order to have this more aggressive saving strategy. And I don't get me wrong, we don't skimp on the things that we really enjoy. We still have family days out. We still have meals out. But we don't waste money on fancy gadgets or expensive clothing. And we also keep the lines of communication open. It's not easy, I give you that. But I think having transparency with your family's finances is key to financial success. What is your experience when it comes to financial security as a family? Are there ways that and tactics that you use in order to save money or to spend less? I really would love to know how you do this because perhaps we can share some tips and tricks with each other.